The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. We are back. Bronx Roots with Michael Preminger and David Hubler. I'm Ralph Tycho with the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, and I'd like to introduce the two gentlemen who are with us today, Michael Preminger and David Hubler. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. I Good. was... Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, everything uh, other than caterpillars. However, <laughs> my, my, my was a friend of mine, because I'm allergic to caterpillars, a friend of mine sent me a link to, a, a, and you can find anything on the Internet, uh, to, remember David Susskind? Sure. Had a, sure. Yeah. Uh, I guess it was a local show in New York. I know it was, it was out in New York. In 1970, he had a, a one episode was about uh, Jewish mothers, and here's the reason that I brought it up. One of the guys, oh Mel Brooks, said he he never knew he had. I think it was Mel Brooks said he he never knew that he had furniture till he was 34 years old, because everything was covered. <laughs> All the furniture was covered. Now my parents never did that, and the and what the reason I'm bringing it up, the first time that I saw something like that, and David will know the name, was at a fellow named Jeffrey Bell's house. Sure. I went I went to this kid's house his apartment, and all the furniture was covered, and I think you had was to take a, off your shoes. Was it plastic and, or a fabric that covered it? Uh, it was plastic. It was plastic, plastic. of course. You oh, they plastic. But you couldn't see it, and for some reason, you also had to take off your underwear. It was a very strange apartment. <laughs> and um, um, so, so you could see the furniture. And I remember, I couldn't sit and I couldn't walk anywhere. It was I couldn't wait to go out in the hall. And I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I can't remember. I, there were some people in in my street who also had this plastic. Everything was covered in plastic. The trouble was, you'd sit, you couldn't sit on it. You'd keep sliding off onto the floor because it was so well, you'd slippery. Stick, you'd stick in the summer with the humidity. Well, you'd stick, right? Yeah, or you'd stick if you were wearing short pants. Whole... Right. In <laughs> the winter, zip. Yep. And it would be like taking off a Band-Aid when you stood up. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to stand up very slowly. Cause you... <laughs> <laughs> but in the winter, you get up, onto the floor you right away. plastic cover with you, right. It was... Yeah, yeah. And even the cushions had plastic covers on them. Oh, well, yeah. you know, if you, you take those plastic covers with you down to the draft board, then you got, <laughs> got yeah. something. They'll look at not for us, not for us. Right? I, I don't want to be be mean, but there was one guy we knew. His uh, I I dated a sister. She was covered with plastic. <laughs> it, 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 uh, just some people just want. Yeah. To, I don't know. It's easy to boil boil them in plastic, and nowadays, um, try kissing. You start a new relationship. Murder. You better boil the person. Uh, just to be on the safe side, um, uh, but uh, so maybe a topic we'll talk about Jewish mothers. So we all, all three had them, and um, got yeah, so, so I'm, uh, not the same one. We all had different ones, uh, allegedly, but alike in many ways. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. What they, what they produced was a certain common denominator. I'm guessing your mothers had a smile on, on their faces, uh, at least occasionally. They enjoyed humor. Start with you, Michael. Oh, yeah. And as a matter of fact, the smile, a thing that I have always remembered, whenever I would talk to my mother on the phone, this is once I got older and I had moved out here to California and she would always end the conversation with give me a smile uh. which, which, was, which was wonderful she had a wonderful sense of humor and, and 
she always felt I was the only one who really got her sense of humor. I think I mentioned one she she uh, um she used to wear her her purse a uh, a pocketbook with the strap around her shoulder and and I would ask her why she said because if anybody wants to grab my bag they're going to have to take me with them. And she said and I don't mind going. <laughs> so she 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 really had a good, she had a good a good sense of humor. She she and had an uncle. What did she the, What did she made her What look What made her laugh on television in those days? Uh, boy, that's a good question. Uh, uh um, what was the name? Of, uh, oh boy, I, it's on the tip of my tongue. And so is where I bit myself yesterday, but that's something else. <laughs> Same spot. Um, yeah, never bite your tongue. Do you ever bite your tongue? I don't, I mean, have... I don't mean when people say bite your tongue. I mean bite oh, your really tongue. bite your tongue. Yeah. No, yeah. you keep that's stuff in inside you, you'll explode. That's why do we do those things? I don't understand. What, uh... Yeah. Why not say it all? You what was Marlon Perkins' show? Oh, uh, zoo, uh, zoo, par- zoo parade, Marlon Park. It's from the Sh- Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago. And that they had all these. That-, that made my mother laugh. That was <laughs> <laughs> when the hyenas were. <laughs> oh boy, she would well, break up. I'd have to get her a glass of water. With, she was laughing so hard. With both. I tell you what, I did make her laugh. Sid Caesar. The Sid Caesar. Sid Caesar. I don't know if she ever liked him that much. She thought he was a little. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But right. but but uh, what did make her laugh was Father Knows Best. Because she, she 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 said, "Who are those people? Those people where the husband comes home and the wife is with an apron and everything is nice in the house and dinner's ready." She said. Who 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 are they? Who do, who lives like that? Where do they come? She from? worked. Well, we had we you know when the things were dull, we had this contest uh, to see who had the better job, Ozzy Nelson or Robert Young on Father <laughs> Knows Best, because you yeah, couldn't yeah. tell who worked, and I mean. Ozzy Nelson was always there, walking around in a sweater in California. I don't know why he was with, but he wore a sweater all the time. And Robert Young would come home from work with a shirt and tie and a suit on, but you never knew what he, what he did. Where no, he no. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he just left in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have been going to medical school, you know, medical school he part-time. He was a traffic school instructor. Could have been. There you go. In right. Springfield, in Springfield, the way he lived. Right, right. And Everybody lived in Springfield on television, you know? In <laughs> Springfield, they had no jobs. They always looked. No jobs. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's funny. <laughs> Good but way to we, go through life, as a matter of fact. Good work if you could not get it. My mother loved you know, one, uh, one watching. Other thing. Yeah. That they mentioned on the Susskind show, or that, and I've noticed this. That, not that Mel Brooks's observation was unique, but he said his mother was um, very short. She was the, the height of Michael Dunn. Remember Michael Dunn? Yes. Ship of A lot of Jewish mothers seem to, uh, 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 or well, now that uh, getting around the same age, but. A lot of Jewish women seem to, some people shrink a, a, an inch or two, but I think Jewish women shrink about a foot and a half when they get to about 70. <laughs> and they, they hide behind like teapots. They're so tiny. I go to a Jewish home and the ones who are walking, you trip over them. I've never. They're like little R2D2s. Yeah, oh yeah. What? They're like little Why R2D2s. Why are they so tiny? What happens? I, you know, I think it's but that the Eastern voice, Europe... The voice and the attitude remain. So there's this... this is oh, yeah. A, true? <laughs> a chihuahua dog barking <laughs> at the biggest dog on the block. They, they're they tiny, but they don't know they're tiny. And they're That's fierce true. from That's within. That's pretty funny. Well, I'll tell you, it's, and 
in our in our neighborhood, I don't think Michael, back me up on this. I don't think any one of us reached six feet tall. In in fact, when my when my younger son my younger son was in town uh, doing a, a show over at the. Um, uh, daughter to the American Revolution Hall. There, um, I, we we were invited to the to the dress rehearsal, and so we had four tickets. So I invited a, an old friend from the neighborhood and his wife. So the four of us come in, and my son Jeffrey looks looks at us and says, "Didn't anybody grow in your neighborhood?" <laughs> <laughs> and it was at that point that I realized, yeah, I mean, we were all just about the same size. Yeah, I think that, yeah, you know, think about that. Yeah. Would, you know. My neighborhood in Queens, uh, too, and um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Um, and I'll tell you, I tell you, I went with my wife to her high school reunion a good number of years ago. Now it must have been like fifteen, twenty year reunion, and she was one of. And my wife is not tall; she was like among the tallest women there. Oh my God. I mean, it was yeah, like so Becky is short. Yeah, and th- this was like Munchkin High. I mean, these two women, <laughs> you know, a predominant a number of them were Jewish, and I guess they were getting ready to be Jewish grandmothers and mothers, <laughs> well, already mothers, so they they were already shrinking. Well, they were well, tiny. Uh, that came with the ter- I think uh, drugs today for women uh, keep bones. Healthy, the calcium today maybe, yeah, maybe that keeps what keeps it from happening, or maybe it is still happening with women who are our age who have reached middle and upper middle, 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 middle we call it <laughs> middle, middle. Right. A live guy in middle his last name is Stephen. Middle. Al- alive. That. But speaking of which, our demographics came in. And there is someone alive that listens. It's not <laughs> real. Can we send them a what gift or something? I was as surprised as anybody. Don't don't, don't worry about it. Um, the whole station is made up of a minion of folks, all with our seicho, all with our our brains, who just relive the past and talk about how how things were, and it mostly it centers around baseball. And what have you? Um, can I tell? A can I just say story that there were two guys who six feet in the neighborhood? I don't know. They must have been uh, snuck in or something. There was Arnold Silverberg. Do you remember? Oh yes. Mm-hmm. And Bruce Norton. Yes. Maybe Both he was only five eleven or so, but he would get a lot of rebounds because he was tall. That's right. And, uh, and I would uh, make fun of him until he was in his late thirties. I would just call him. And well, say, how, how big was Jerry? Uh, how big I don't was like you um, the kid from Loyola of Chicago? Oh, Jerry Harkness, but he wasn't. Jerry. He wasn't in our neighborhood. I mean, you were talking localized Bronx. Jerry oh, Harkness was a good six foot something. I don't recall he, exactly. He was six three. Go to Yeshiva, and then six three. Yeah, yeah, he could have been six three. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, but uh-huh. I was going to say he was going to go to Yeshiva, and then Loyola just snuck yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, as a transfer happened? student. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> All so right. Cal um, Abrams was Jewish on the Brooklyn Dodgers in the in the fifties, right? Who was Cal this? Abrams. Cal Abrams. Yeah. Uh huh. Now, we have an interesting dynamic here. The three of us, I was a New York Giant fan. Michael, you were a Dodger fan. And David, you were a Yankee fan. Yep. Mm -hmm. Interesting that a Bronx person becomes a Dodger fan. How'd that come about? I think it came about because the Yankees were always winning, and I was always, I don't know why, from the beginning, at the beginning, when I was young, I was for the underdog, and it seemed that uh, and that the Yankees were just, you know, the General Motors. I think people would call them of, of, right. of baseball. You, just, you wanted to see somebody else win, and plus, I just 
the first ball player that I remember really becoming a huge fan of was Jackie Robinson. And, you know, as we speak, this is Jackie Robinson Day in baseball. Oh, that's right. Where everybody right. wears number 42 in his honor. Mm -hmm. Which makes scoring a game almost impossible. Because <laughs> right. you can't tell, especially the opposing team, if you're, you know the guys on your team, but another team comes in and they're all wearing 42, it's like a nightmare. You can't keep score. You don't know. Right. Who's right. Imagine how hard it is for the guys on radio um, announcing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you don't know the the guy's face, a new guy comes up from the minors or something. Sure, <laughs> sure. They'll have number forty two on the scorecards. You know um, that, that that the press the press hands out. Who's this guy? He's number forty two. I don't know. They're all forty two. <laughs> <laughs> What's your memory of Jackie Robinson? Early memories, Michael. Uh, just the way he played, uh, I, I, uh, just uh, yeah, I, I can't think hey, of anything. Bad enough, <laughs> and is, is he could take a game him. over in his very hands, and uh, very few before or since could do that. Um, right, right. Mays could, Ricky Henderson could, um, but and I love Duke Snyder because that was the nickname my uncle gave me when. Called me Duke when I was a little baby. Oh, because he, he that's wanted cool. me to be royalty, but <laughs> we had him shot. So, uh, as good royalty would do, would do much, if, they, but... if they disagree in any way. <laughs> One of my summer dreams was with a friend of mine. The two of us were going to go out to California and pick avocados. On Duke Snyder had an avocado mm. ranch or farm, I guess you'd call it. Oh wow. And and that was we. That was one of our, our goals, but we never we never did do it. We, but we just talked about it every year, you know, when school was let out. Hey, like let's go. Oh. Yeah, he had a, Do you he had like an avocados? I had never tasted an avocado. I didn't even know what it looked like. I mean, who had avocados yeah. in the Bronx? Oh, never heard of him. No, well, I never heard of him until I got to California. Sure, of course, and it, and especially since it was green. I mean, you know, kids yeah. don't eat green food. So, yeah, here's but another today, thing I've never heard of. Eat avocados What's that? I do you eat avocados today. Growing up in New York. Do I eat avocados today? I, yeah. I eat it like a dip sometimes. But I hear it's very, yeah. very high in calories, so I don't eat too much of it. Hmm. But I don't make it. I, I mean, we go to, a, go to a Mexican restaurant, they always put a... A bowl of this green stuff in front of you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, right. I'm not a fan. I'm I don't even know how you would eat the thing other than to grind it up and make some sort of paste out of it. Oh, they but do. You, no, you you just cut the fruit and you like a slice and put it next to your sandwich or something. They really? do that out here. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Is that I'm like um, what's what's that other thing? Oh, the uh, the other fruit, tropical fruit that people eat a lot of uh, uh i can't think of it. it looks like a kidney so i don't i don't uh, 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 pinto beans no that's no 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 it's a big big thing it's a big thing uh uh they they turn they turn bright red and, and yellow and yellow um, eggplant no and that's brown and black oh but no it looks oh, like um, you, uh, and yellow yeah yeah and you peel it I know what you it's pretty good, but you don't get you get you get some of them here too, but not like you do in California, of course. Oh, here it's uh, people. It's that's it. Avocado all over the place. Yeah, yeah. No, but that was a that was a dream of mine to go out there and pick and pick avocados. I mean, I mean, I don't know well, why. Would I might you like have... me to send you some? <laughs> no, I was thinking though, maybe it was it was my desire to do better in Spanish because if I were working out there in the fields, I'm sure a lot of the people would be speaking Spanish in the fields. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's that maybe that's what it was. But I never did get out there, and I never did very well in Spanish in school. Uh, so. That's a good combination, right? There. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you um, be surprised if you came out here and went to one of the fields and? And, and most of the people were speaking Yiddish. That would be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yiddish man. Over oh, here, I have a piece here. Eat, Essen, Essen. Okay, I'll be over there in a minute. Picking <laughs> lumps of gefilte fish off a bush. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Hey, your Here's mom, it. speaking of mothers, went uh, worked together. Uh, you briefly oh, yeah. At the ho- well, mother. they didn't work together. They worked in the same hospital, yeah. Right, okay. right. Oh, very good, Stan. Yeah, yeah, you remember that. Yeah, that that was like the area's biggest employer, um, and now today it's a tremendously uh, large medical center. Um, it's interesting. It started out as a hospital for tuberculosis, tubercul- tuberculosis oh. pa- patients. Yeah, and I remember as a little kid, you could look through the, the fence. There was a fence with some bushes in front of it, and you could look at it, and you could see these people all sitting there in wheelchairs, you know, just because uh, oh, they yeah. all had, uh, yeah, it was a very strange, strange thing. Um, but then it's like a, a sanitarium, little, in other words. Yeah, it was. That's it, right. But it was also a regular hospital because I had my tonsils taken out there and I had my appendix taken out there. So Was, it, that was this elective or this somebody? Yeah, I had nothing to do one <laughs> summer. <laughs> In fact, it just turns by and, and they grab yeah. your appendix. Yeah. They right. had a special uh, be too appendectomy. Careful in the box. That's the mark. No, oh, right. I mean, there was a big. There was a guy walking up and down Jerome Avenue with a card. You know, one of these sandwich things. Today's special appendectomy. Right. So people lined he, up. He, was in, he had a big sign in front of Alexander's for a while, but they threw him out. They, they, yeah, they did. They did. They, <laughs> They sent them all the way down. A sandwich (laughs) sign. A sandwich, yeah. A sandwich. A sandwich. A sandwich. Yes, of course. (laughs) Vodan? Vodan, right. You know, that's uh, one of the great things about Yiddish is that it's a great, great expressively expressive oh, language. Oh, wonderful. It's so good because even people who have never heard a term in Yiddish, if you say it to them, they understand what you're talking about. Exactly. I heard it described as a mishmash of English and German. I don't know if that's... Um, well, it's definitely English? it's definitely German, Germanic root. There's no question. Yeah, that. oh, yes. You know, I mean, right. uh, probably yeah, but the I, language English. in those days, but it's been bastardized to the point where um, there are Yiddish expressions that people don't even know that they're they're Yiddish. Oh right. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, they Russian, all of a lot of words. Some southern guy, was machst du, y'all? Yeah, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> That would be the end of the world, right? <laughs> right. The, uh, One word that I always thought was Yiddish and turned out not to be Yiddish was the word tumult. There's a tumult. There's too oh. much tumult. And it sounded so Yiddish, I always assumed that it was. It thinks that. Yeah. Yes. What is it? Not, it isn't a Yiddish word. That's uh, No. It's a good standard, you know, Anglo-Saxon word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe the, some of the Anglos, maybe some of those Anglo Saxons had a little Jewish blood in them. I don't know, but uh, hmm. you know, like it's like aggravation. It's tumult, you know. Uh, so, well, I was how about this? Talk. The word bandit. My my grandparents would hmm. call the grandkids banditen. Yeah, banditen. Right. Was that bandit. bandits or because uh, we thought of it? as we're a bunch of bandits. The little kids are running around like bandits. Was there any correlation to that word and bandit? Bandit. The bandit. I don't know. I, I don't think that's mm. a good question. Okay. You would, I wish you I had that. Well, who is it? Leo Rostin? I was, to die curious. I was yeah, just going to say I have that book. I could, I could Leo Rostin, right yes. Now. The Joys yes. of Yiddish. I think one of the greatest books of all yeah. time. Amen to that. Absolutely. That is now in my hand. Oh, great. Go to B, on the B. I will. I will. I left that B. Yeah. Um, Yeah, and there are so many terms that have come down into generalized 
standard English usage that have, have their roots in, in Yiddish. And it's a shame that, you know, I mean, I know a, there are a number of Yiddish language programs in colleges, um, and I'm, I'm sure like Brandeis has it, um, has one. Um, of course, their cross-town rival, Holy Cross, may not have one. but you know. Probably not, now <laughs> that I'm thinking about it, right? <laughs> Holy Cross. Uh, when I was a kid, I don't we weren't observant, my fam, but we loved the culture, worshipped the culture. My parents sent us to Yiddish school, where we learned to read, write, converse in, in Yiddish. And um, the Hebrew really? was what they thought was wow. a prayer language, and Yiddish was a, conver- a conversational language, and... Uh, so at one time I was pretty fluent in um, in Yiddish, and I still understand the Bissell. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. I, I can't find Bandit. It's not in here. Well, uh, maybe he mm-hmm. his grandmother was in Rose Ness, and she didn't scream. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. You're making me crazy of that. Uh, it's uh, such a wonderful language. I, I wish I had I could speak. See, my grandparents didn't speak it. My grandparents did not speak Yiddish. And so uh, friends of mine who did, who had first-generation parents or grandparents who spoke mostly Yiddish in the house, they knew much more Yiddish than I did, simply because it was spoken in the house. My house now, was... I, I'm going to ask both of you guys, when we grew up... Um, uh, a middle-aged person, generally, a Jewish person, spoke with a Jewish accent. You know, sure. At that time. Did you ever, when you were a kid, do you ever think what it would be like? You turn 40, and you go, well, how you doing? I'm doing all right, but I'm seem to be developing an accent. I, oh, yeah. I thought it came with middle age. That I did, I did, not only did I think it came with middle age, I could not imagine any older person in the, let's say from the, because when you're 12 and 13, somebody who's 40 is ancient, but I could not imagine anyone who reached that golden age who did not speak with a Yiddish accent. I mean, I would think about, you know, older farming people out in Minnesota or someplace. <laughs> and, no, really. And I'd say, they, they don't speak, they have to speak with a Yiddish accent. <laughs> only way you can go you know and i always thought of writing a short story that would about a guy who as he gets older starts speaking yiddish you know takes over his whole life uh simply because he has no control over it but i don't know enough yiddish to do that well you'd know enough english so uh your assignment davis david <laughs> is to write us some uh radio theater that we could the three of us can perform well, I was trying to think of, since from last week, I was trying to think of, a, of, of lyrics to Pesach in Panama, and I haven't come up with a good... You know, I mean... It would be springtime with Hitler. Yes, so exactly. That's, in that's, Panama. Yes, but that was, that was the music that kept coming into my head, and I said, no, I really don't want to do that, you know. But, but uh, you can do it, David. You go... Um, Pesach in Panama with with Pablo, but <laughs> but there were other you know there were other other songs too that where the music would fit with the lyrics you know but I didn't want to I didn't want to intrude on on, on Mel Brooks um, you know for his, oh. and, you know a couple of times there have been times when people have said to me you know you look just like Mel Brooks and I said no no you you mean the other Mel Gibson that's the one I look like. <laughs> You got the names confused, but no, yeah. seriously. Yeah, I, 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 uh, right away, that's who I thought of was Mel Gibson. By the way, sure, I'm, well, that's because you've never seen me in person. No, that's because <laughs> that's because I'm legally blind. Uh, oh, okay. So. Then I don't mind sending you pictures. <laughs> Boy, so all the two of you. My, are that's perfect. why radio is so great, uh, because you could use our imag- people use our, their imaginations. What we look like. You look like Mel Gibson. I look like Rock Hudson. 
Well, maybe that's a poor guy. That... No, who knows? You know, you know. He was a good-looking man. Good -looking. But, Mike, did you listen to the old radio shows growing up as a kid? Did you listen? To... Because uh, I was just going to talk about, remember the show Baby Snooks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, there were a bunch uh, of them on. Before my time. There were a bunch of these shows on between like five and six o'clock in the afternoon. Oh yeah, yeah. But Baby Snooks, I don't know why you. But that was was I thought it was a baby talking, but it was Fanny Bryce. Right. You, oh, right. And, uh, um, boy, I know well, it makes Bryce me sound like I'm a hundred ten years girl. old, but what? Yeah, funny girl. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she did that show. Yeah, you always wondered what did these people look like. Who uh William Conrad Yeah. Remember right. The, the Lone Ranger. There you go. There you go. No, he he actually he actually was the original uh Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke. Oh, okay. okay. And he did he did I think he did do the Lone Ranger for a bit. I uh, maybe I know, I I take that back. Uh, he didn't, uh, but he was definitely the original Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke. And if you know what William Conrad looked like, I mean, <laughs> he never would have made it on, on the TV show. Well, yeah. They tried him as the Lone Ranger. They put him on silver, and the horse passed away. <laughs> yeah. But, and that's how Peter that's was when they said, this is not going to work. No. That's no. how Peter was born. They came out and investigated. They said, the guy had a fat ass. You should have known. Who is this? Peter. Sorry. Peter? Peter. An oh, Peter. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, uh, People for Ethical Treatment of Animals. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Oh. Oh, William oh, Conrad oh, oh, oh. is the poster boy for that. As a yeah. They, 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 that's, well, they actually tried to get him on a horse with a hoist. But um, <laughs> he couldn't ride off of Ohio Silver with the horse. <laughs> the horse was on his knees. The horse, the horse was... Leave me alone. What's the matter? Oh, God, you? yeah. Well, he couldn't the find the horse, horse with the hoist, <laughs> so he had to put the horse in the hoist. But they were uh, wonderful all shows. The, all these voiceover people to this day. <laughs> the people who do voiceovers, you, right. you, you credit, you credit to what they it. look like. And, you know, I Back went... Then. Yeah, and and the great the the unsung heroes of all of those shows were these sound effect guys who did these wonderful you know they would shake a an aluminum sheet for lightning and they had like coconut halves to, uh, on wood the clopping of horses I mean they yes. had a million yeah and and the shows were so realistic um, that even today there's a, an NPR program on Sunday night that has a whole bunch of them. Some, from 6 p.m. East Coast to 11 o'clock, one one mm. show right after another, and uh, but the the ones I used to like to listen to were between five and six in the afternoon, when they had like uh, Bobby Benson's B Bar B Riders and Straight Arrow and a whole, a whole bunch of these uh, 50, 15 minute shows, and before t before we got a television, that's what I you know that I would listen to. Um, in the afternoon, just after I came home from playing, and uh, um, and uh, before I had dinner. You, you know, I you, when I was a kid, my uh, and this is before I became a professional name dropper. Uh, I was just a kid then, <laughs> but my, my cousin wrote for a, a show that you guys may remember, Racket Squad. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he became a producer in Hollywood later on uh, from that start. But uh, that, that was big time in those days. Radio paid big bucks to these performers. Oh, like, yes. Oh, sure, I'm sure. In fact, one of the shows they normally have on their Sunday, Sunday uh, review of old radio shows uh, were things like Lux Theater of the Air and a couple. And they had the top Hollywood actors and actresses either recreating the roles they played in the films or using oh. them in other uh, other adaptations of films. Um, James Stewart uh, appeared any number of times, and um, I can't remember any of the other names, but you'd recognize them instantly. And they did this, uh, in many cases, before a live studio audience. And all they would be doing would be standing there in front of a microphone with the script in their hands, right. you know, 
and people loved it. But their voices were so well trained. Oh, um, yeah. so sure. like the NBC announcers, Don Pardo and the and those people. Um, it was just a career in itself. Yes. Yeah. Getting one... every word, every so syllable sure. right, and um, and when to emphasize and all that other stuff. There's one guy yeah. that I love, and he 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 he's always on for like truck commercials because his voice is like down in his ankles. You got a Ford F one fifty truck, and, he, and he's on the. He anytime you see these truck commercials, it's always some guy whose voice is. Hey, bad. Michael, you got you're gonna recognize this from Traffic School. They had these films that you'd play, the students to take up part of the day and the right. voice the guy that does the commercial the black gentleman on um he does all state commercials or oh dennis whatever it is. Uh, yeah that asphalt was, guy he played a uh, tv he was one of the first tv uh, black presidents he played on a series. He was a president of... Hat, Hat Spirits or something like Hat, that. Yeah, 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 you're right. Hayes, Hayes, Hayes. Uh, yeah, Hats, beautiful yeah. voice. Beautiful, yeah, yeah. beautiful mm-hmm. voice. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So... And he did, that's right, he did I the all state. I didn't speak like that, but I, I just, <laughs> I gave it up. Right, for Lent, as a matter of For Lent. That was your first time you gave up anything for Lent, and it's been a lifetime of giving in since. You're, you're a wonderful Catholic human being, sir. <laughs> I, I think I told this story in, in, when I went to Ithaca College. My speech teacher actually did change my voice. He, he, he worked on my accent and, and, you know, things like dog and coffee and stuff. And at the end of the semester, they he, he taped me audio tape and and was so thrilled and so was I that they he play he grabbed me I remember and took me down the hall uh, at the speech department he said because yeah, he and he played the tape from the beginning of the semester and then at the end and I actually it was almost a different voice it was much richer oh. and it was but hmm. unfortunately I didn't I didn't continue to to follow up with it, I let myself slide. But you can, you can change. Oh yes, okay? absolutely, absolutely. I don't recognize a, a distinct New York slash Bronx accent in either of you guys. Really? Yeah, no, mm. especially you, David. Oh well, ah. uh, that's interesting because um, I will open my mouth to cough, and somebody say, "You're from New York." <laughs> Huh. <laughs> that's hysterical. Uh, no, I stood out. Maybe that's because you're yeah. not covering your mouth when you cough. Maybe that's what they mean. <laughs> I, I still know. get, and I guess David does too. Uh, okay. Maybe not as much anymore, but people, I would open my mouth, you know, like, hello, and people, oh, what part of New York are you from? Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. In fact, I did, I too took uh, took some lessons when I started to do uh, uh, programming for at uh, VOA. They wanted me to t- you know to get some uh, 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 let, not just not just uh, changing uh, the way I spoke, but also for for um, breathing exercises so that I could read mm-hmm. uh, newscast or something like that without <gasps> without you know coming in the middle. Of the <gasps> so uh, and that was that, I thought that was very helpful. They did, uh, they did a pretty good job with that. Well, we solved the breathing into the microphone problem by elimination, by the process of elimination on this morning's show early, earlier on, David. A little callback. Um, <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. Pe- people on uh, oh, 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 air will somebody. oftentimes breathe into the mic. Right. And, uh, so not unusual. No, but Thank you, gentlemen, just... for not breathing into the mic this morning. This has been, as usual, one of the highlights of my week. Well, I love it, too, and it's always Me good too. to talk with Mike. Yep, mm-hmm. we always have good. a good time. Glad to do it, and um, I just want to say thank you for listening out there. We'll be back next week. The show is called Bronx Roots. 
The hosts are David Hubler and Michael Preminger. I'm Ralph Tycho, the weak link of it all at the Comfortably (laughs) Zoned Radio Network. Adios, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Guacamole. Bye-bye. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha.